mentor panel, as I mentioned, is about helping your mentee with leadership skills. I would like to welcome our speakers, uh, Katerina, who is head of product as SDRWE, or Kate as well, uh, Daniel, who is performance development coach at at and and Christina, who is head of uh, marketing shared service at Adeco Group. So we will be uh, asking them some questions today. What is important to say as well, that our speakers are also our experienced mentors who are mentoring for quite some time with us in, in FemPallet already. Uh, brilliant. So uh, before I ask our uh, speakers to introduce themselves, just one thing that I want to mention to you is that we will have a Q&A sections at the end of the world talk. So if you have any questions or if you come up with some questions during uh, today's panel, you will have an opportunity to ask them. If you are not in the situation where you can ask directly or your microphone is not working or you can't uh, uh, really speak at the moment, you can drop your question uh, in the chat and then I will read it for our speakers uh, during uh, the Q and A's uh, so you don't miss the opportunity to ask. And also if you have some comments uh, later on in the Q and A section, you will have opportunity to, um, uh, to, to comment. Um, brilliant. So uh, I would like to ask our speakers uh, now to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about who they are, what they do, also what is their experience with uh, mentoring. So if I can uh, ask uh, Kate to start, please. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Maya, thank you for, for having me. So as mentioned, my name is Katarina. Uh, I work for a company in Prague called STRV. We build digital software solutions, apps, websites, you name it. Um, and it's been an incredible journey of about five five years or so uh, here, here in Prague. Uh, my experience with mentorship started in Canada, actually. So you'll hear my funny accent come out sometimes with a lot of A's and a boots. Um, but that is where... I think my mentorship started, I was extremely blessed very early on to have some phenomenal mentors who just helped guide me and really kind of show me support, uh, not only when I needed it, but also provide some insights uh, when I thought I was going in the right direction and to help pivot. And I've been a mentor with Van Pellet for the past five years, um, and it has been a phenomenal journey. So I'm excited for the, for the panel today because it, it's, uh, it's been an awesome ride. Wonderful. Thank you for introducing uh, yourself. And now can I ask Daniel to introduce himself as well? Certainly. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Glad to be with you all. So my name is Daniel. I grew up in Damascus, Syria. I've been in Czech Republic for eight years. My Czech is still very poor, but working on it on that part. Uh, yeah, I've been in leadership and coaching. I was fortunate to be in leadership now for over eight years. And when it comes to experience of mentoring, I do this also at the organization's uh, level, how the new managers transition to new roles uh, as well. Uh, currently, I help managers to become better and effective leaders uh, throughout coaching uh, as well. On the side, I work also in terms of uh, result certified coach and brain-based coaching certification, and this is something I'm passionate about. I've uh, been with Frank Pallet for over a year and a half, and it's been a wonderful journey, definitely. As Kate mentioned, a lot of mentors added a lot to me personally, and I would like to uh, pass this on to other people as well along the journey. Happy to be with you all. Looking forward to this time. Brilliant. Thank you very much for, for introduction. And uh, now I will ask Christina to introduce herself as well. Hey, everyone. Christina here. Um, I have been in Prague for about 12 years. Um, been working for the last one and a half year. I have been working in a company called the Adeco Group. Um, been leading a team of uh, about 60 people in total, all sorts of marketing professionals. Uh, my team management, people management journey started 15 years ago. And uh, with Fempalet have been mentoring different uh, professionals uh, for about three years. It has been an incredible journey as well for me uh, because every single mentee brings a lot of like self opportunities for self-reflection self and uh, trying out new ways of uh, 
looking at things. So uh, thanks for having us, Maya. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the discussion. Brilliant. Uh, thank you. So let's jump straight in. And uh, I prepared some questions uh, for you. Maybe the first thing when we talk about uh, leadership, uh, my first question would be focused on the leadership styles because there are multiple styles uh, of leadership and they all re also depend on uh, the situation. They are suitable for different kind of environments. So how would you help your mentee to find their uh, leadership style? And we can start with Christina, then I will ask Daniel and then Katerina. So um, for me, usually the discussion around leadership style, what, what leadership style should one adopt, starts from self-reflection. Let's look into the situation that you are in, your, your skills, your, uh, let's say, soft, soft skills, but also look into your team and what, what is necessary for your team to achieve as a team, the individuals within that team to achieve as well as professionals, and how it all can be combined together uh, as a whole. So as you mentioned, um, there are a few different types of leadership styles. And um, sometimes depends on the situation, you have to adopt, uh, kind of mix it up with situational leadership and, and, and your leadership style. So usually, um, it all starts from taking a look uh, at your what you're trying to achieve and uh it's either delegate in certain certain points of time sometimes you will need to coach if they need to be coached a bit more sometimes it's about actually uh generally speaking it's about establishing the rules of accountability responsibility i think in general leadership or good management let's say in in a little bit like um old school wording uh it's it's not a rocket science it's about establishing transparent uh human relationships and uh trying to help people to achieve the goals being the best versions of themselves obviously uh within the given situation of the business you are so um i think like i'll, I'll let others comment and we can actually come back to the topic if needed but yeah essentially like being being a good communicator being transparent and uh, understanding um, what each individual needs in order to succeed awesome so building on what christina mentioned it about the self-reflection so when it comes to the mentee it's definitely good to start with values exercise and it's also something offered by fempele so because they need to know themselves okay what values they stand on so once they know what values they stand on it's going to be more clear for them as well next steps what they can do also some personality tests as well so there's like a couple of them very very valuable ones on online so it's going to give them that self-reflection just to absorb okay those are my say that my strong sides those are my uh, let's say weak sides and also when it comes to strength and opportunities it's a good practice we ask them okay go ask your friends go ask close people to you let them share what they think about you that's strong, good, or actually not. And you need a little bit of work. So again, just more self-reflection there. We give the mentees a little bit of some reading material as well. So they need to know also what kind of leadership styles there are also over there, how many of them. And maybe we can ask them a question in terms of, okay, what kind of leader you would like to be? Or have you been working with a leader that inspired you and what made them inspiring? And okay, what do you want? What style that works for them or worked for you? And we can go from them. So again, self-reflection values exercise, personalities exercise, strength or weaknesses that will help them to identify. And it's a discovery journey. It's not going to happen in a week or a month. So they have to evolve along the way uh, as well. So this is what I can add from my end. I think they both covered phenomenal points. I feel like there's very little to add from, I got the easy round. Um, but I definitely want to echo what Daniel said. I think to me personally, I think your personality and your leadership style are definitely intertwined. Um, and I think naturally, depending on your personality, you're going to be a certain type of leader or even have hesitations to be a leader based on who you are. So determining that first step and saying, who am I? Um, I think it's just easier to then navigate the, the leadership conversation. 
And I think the only other thing I will add is in terms of the examples, um, most conversations that I've ever started, I said, you know, can you give me in your professional and in your personal life, an example of somebody that you admired, you admire their leadership at this particular moment in time. And why, why was that? And a lot of the time, the answers that I get back was this person just knew what to do, or they really just kind of calmed everyone down, or there's a certain level of of leadership that comes with just being able to ease, ease the crowd. And that I think is when you can start having conversations and say, okay, you know, why would you not be able to do that? What scared you about that situation and whatnot? And I think that's when we start to get into the the leadership conversation and stuff like that. So that's the only thing I'll, I'll add to that. Brilliant. Thank you for that. I think you brought in brilliant points and all of them definitely very valid. Um, as you mentioned, uh, one thing is that you really need to adjust your leadership style to environment. But the other thing is looking at what kind of personality the mentee is because the they need to be basically okay with the leadership style they are trying to uh, they are trying to do or improve. And uh, also, I have to say, I met uh, many people who said like, you know what, I actually don't feel like being a leader. I don't think I have it in myself. So there is other thing that is like exploring if it's just a lack of confidence when it comes to it, or if it's really that, you know what, maybe some people are just not feeling like they want to do it and they uh, would be good in it. And that's totally all right. Um, Maybe aside of this challenge of uh, choosing the leadership style, another challenge is becoming a leader and being a first time manager. And we've got a lot of mentees who actually come and they are first time in the managing position and they are struggling to navigate it. Uh, So what areas of leadership and management would you suggest our mentors to focus on when it comes to working with uh, first time managers? And let's start this time with uh, Katarina, then Christina, and then Daniel. Sounds good. So I think the first thing, I think if all of us think back to that first time you had that role, whether it was a responsibility role or whatnot, there's a certain amount of pressure that I think we naturally put on ourselves. And one of the first things that we usually discuss in leadership is learning confidently to say, I don't know. And that that is a perfectly okay answer. And to say, I don't know, followed by comma, right? Like, I'll figure it out. I'll let you know. I'll get back to you, whatever it might be. Um, And I think as first-time managers or leaders, you assume that you need to have all of the answers. And I think that's where a lot of the struggles come from. And I can confidently say that out of all the meetings I had today and last week, I am very rarely the smartest person in the room, and I very rarely know all the answers. But I think something that I do very well is I can bring people together who I know can complement each other and work and whatnot. And that, and so I think that's one part of the leadership for first time is to say you don't need to put all the pressure on your own shoulders and think you have to carry everything. That's not how this works. And the second part that I think is really key is listen which sounds so simple, but a lot of the times people don't actually need you to solve their problems. They need you to be a soundboard and they need just this uh, literally like a rand or a person to talk to. And you might not even need to provide the answers because they'll actually come to the answers themselves if you give them that space. So as first-time managers, do not be too eager to jump in or too eager to help um, really just make sure that if you're you're jumping in, you, it's the right time and you're being you're being asked to. So um, Kate, amazing point. Uh, really, it's like so important sometimes uh, to uh, really practice this simple moments really to stop for a second. Uh, I would just add a couple of other points as well, just um, from from the perspective of first time manager, I've seen one of the biggest kind of instincts is uh, micromanaging because you want it to be done a certain way, otherwise it won't be done and, and stuff like that. Really um, give yourself the time to 
don't be overwhelmed first of all give yourself the time to understand also your role your responsibilities to get to know the team as well as their personalities how you are going to match your personality because um, a lot of times we get to manage people that we wouldn't be friends with uh, outside of that working few hours together so it's it is a challenge these are personal complex relationships that you have to figure out and don't be overwhelmed uh start building relationships and that doesn't mean build friendships with uh, the people you will be working with or for or um your direct reports but normal human relationship with you, where you understand their strengths, weaknesses, their working style, and where you can establish an environment of feedback, open feedback, suggestions, and, and uh, really open communication. Uh, also, sometimes as first ma first time managers, um, we usually kind of um, feel a little bit inconfident of of setting clear expectations of what we what what we expect because we don't also uh, know a lot of times when we it's first time we are managing a, a, a team this is a new responsibility the first instinct is also maybe I should be their friend maybe I can't delegate yet or maybe I can't uh, communicate clearly about what performance do I expect or what kind of behaviors are or are not um, okay, you know, from expectation perspective. So um, I would really recommend uh, listen, understand, take the time to understand, but also be clear, at least for yourself. And this is, it's take, this takes time, but at least for yourself um, and, and for the sake of developing your own relation, uh, leadership style, you have to uh, start practicing um, effective uh, delegation practices sometime or how to motivate sometimes how to work with people who have um, um like are demotivated already regardless of before you being there so yeah overall it's it's uh, the first steps are always kind of our instincts are usually a little bit different but all i want to say is to to take time and um just practice management and good personal relationships and it will just start becoming more natural I think over time yeah I believe Christina and Kate also summed it up uh, very well but I can add there when it comes to the first things that we can help the mentees stepping up into a new role is we it's important for us as mentors to have that conversation shifting the mindset and just actually understanding what are the concerns that they have and just clear these misconceptions from their end. So we just ask, okay, what are the three, three things that's challenging for you now as a new leader? And we tackle that first on because this needs to be off the way. So first, we definitely have to transition the mindset from individual contributor into and now a manager or a leader because it's a different game over there. The second thing I would add definitely when it comes to managing relationships is that people skills part because now we're going to be managing people who used to be your colleagues. So you need to tackle that part as well. So some tips in terms of how to handle these conversations because they are coming and very soon, actually, in the first months. So you need to give them some tips on how to handle this difficult conversation, how to communicate the expectations clearly with them on that part. So people skills, communications, and a little bit of time management tips because they're going to be overwhelmed, as uh, basically Kate mentioned. It's going to be all over the place. So you just need to how start delegating very slowly over there so it's a people skills communication delegation and just top three priorities for them and help them navigate through this transition that would be a good a good thing to start with brilliant thank you for sharing maybe what i would just add is that it's really probably important not to put too much pressure on yourself at the beginning and don't expect from yourself to be perfect as a leader as a manager and just listen and just learn, you know, and give yourself sometimes a break because everyone understands that when you are a first time uh, leader, first time manager, it comes with its own challenges. And I think usually people just tend to expect perfection from themselves while the environment or people around them are not expecting that. And that just adds pressure that is not necessary. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, challenges. 
uh, that uh, leading a team brings. So one of the things that is very crucial for a team and leading a team is keeping the team motivated. And some of our mentees want to learn how to motivate their team or how to motivate them better and make sure that the team is effective. So if you can share with us some tips on how to uh, how to do this, how would you help um, mentees with this kind of task? And let's start uh, now with uh, Daniel, then Katerina and then Christina. Definitely. So when it comes to motivations, I guess what we can uh, share with the mentees is they need to get to know their people for sure. I mean, they need to have these conversations where like, what motivates you? What keeps you up all night? What's your career uh, goals, personal goals? So they need to get to know what ticks with every single team member over there because each, each member has different priorities, whether personally and professionally. And they need to distinguish what motivates them. Some of them are really motivated by money. So okay, let me tailor any tasks or delegate this as incentives wise. Some of them when it comes to just getting exposure. So let me engage them in different projects or stuff like that. Some of them are just really intrinsic incentive. Okay, they need to know that their work has value. So they need validation every now and then. They need praise as well. So you need to ask these questions for your team members. The bottom line is they need to get to know what motivates each of them. Also, they need to share a little bit also in terms of a whole team. It could be an exercise for the whole team as well. I share this with mentees. Build a values board. Okay, all together work on values. What is the team values there? And also what's the common vision? Because if everyone is aligned, everyone is going the same direction, that's motivation. Engage them in more decision-making because once they are part of it, they are going to be more keen into following through and doing action steps. So when it comes to motivation, just get to know your people, get them engaged in the process, know exactly what ticks with every one of them and show genuine care and follow up constantly. That is important when it comes to motivation. I think I'd like to expand a little bit on, on the point that Daniel had is to me, the motivation, there's two different types, right? There's the individual that you can, I think, learn to identify based on who you're dealing with and, and personalities. But then there's also the team motivation. Um, and that tends to be a little bit different. So motivating a full team of people to accomplish something is very different versus trying to motivate an individual um, because those needs might be very, very different. Um, so just separating both of those, um, cause I do think you need to address two kind of while you're working with people. Um, that's one, but the other thing I'd like to add in terms of motivation, along with personality, something that I've recently learned, um, is there tends to be this motivational almost idea that we're trained towards based on the generation. And so what traditionally motivated a certain generation, obviously personalities aside, but what we were told is, hey, you know, this is when you know you're doing a good job at work is very different from, you know, like the baby boomers to like the Gen Gen Z and stuff like that. And needing to take that into, into account in terms of your communication and your motivational plan. Because um, what works on, I think, a little bit of the older generation is most certainly not going to work on the younger one just because they grew up in a very different environment and they see it very differently. So um, taking that into account as well. Um, I'd start with adding a couple of more points. One is um, really like um, lead by an example. Um, try to encourage also collaboration. It helps for team team motivation. Then I think setting clear goals, deadlines, um, expectations, objectives, uh, KPIs. This, if if you have them, obviously, um, it's great to communicate. But um, in any case, communicate regularly, even if uh, Kate, as Kate said uh, in the beginning, even if the answers are that you don't know, you're uncertain, but keep your communication with your team going and be transparent of how much you can communicate. Don't leave like a gap. Don't leave a void. Um, also, um, 
encourage team members to share their ideas, to work together, to support together, to support one another. And um, as well as uh, recognize and reward. Uh, so when you be fair, obviously, but uh, when you as a manager, you actually recognize and encourage others to to celebrate with you the success and, and reward, then um, also I've seen that help as a team to actually work together towards, towards shared goals. So yeah, I guess... Uh, that's about it. Brilliant. Uh, thank you. Uh, when we speak about motivation, one of the things that uh, I think were also in terms of motivation challenging to people in recent years is this big switch to uh, to remote work mm -hmm. for obvious reasons in last uh, few years or hybrid environments that many companies switch to after spending some time working remotely. And I I think, or I can see that even at this point, remote and hybrid working environment is still a very discussed topic and it's a bit tricky. And some of our mentees are struggling with effective management when they are working in online or remote or hybrid environment. So what? how would you help our mentees who want to learn how to delegate work in this kind of uh, environment and maybe what tips would you have uh, for this and let's start uh, with uh, Kate now then I will ask Christina and Danielle I was hoping you wouldn't give me the tough one um no if I'm if I'm being honest I don't at least I haven't myself heard or talked to anyone who's who's who found a solution for this I don't know that this has one yet and I think a lot of companies individuals organizations are still struggling trying to figure out what this balance is. Um, and it's it's definitely not just mentees. It's not first-time managers. I think it's companies that have survived the test of time that are now entering into this era, you know, post-COVID to say, what do we do? What do we do now? So I just want to start with that, that I think this is at least, I'm not as confident in this answer. This is more of like a personal thought. Um, the one struggle that I think is very hard is if you're a manager who normally enjoys face-to-face -face, um, and meetings and you're going up against a company policy that says, actually, we can work remote. We don't really care and whatnot. Because I think that starts with the question of you as the leader having to adapt your own style, um, which goes against the, you know, the grain or goes against the the current of what you used to do. So I think that's challenge number one. And that's one that we've definitely addressed is just helping people get more comfortable with not having face-to-face -face meetings, with not just being able to get the team in a room and whatnot. And so I think that's layer one of like individual leadership. And then a layer two is really pivoting and tweaking your communication styles to make sure that the team still feels heard, that if there are a mix of hybrid people and people in the office um, or fully remote, that nobody feels excluded. Because I think that's when a lot of the times, you know, you start to read certain messages and it's, it doesn't have an emoji and is this person mad at me and, and that, like you start to go down this rabbit hole of, of, of emotions that isn't healthy. Um, and so really checking in onto the communication styles. And I think the only way that you can do that is through kind of the feedback loop, which I, I think we're going to be discussing a little bit later on. So I don't want to jump the gun. So unfortunately, I don't have like a one solution for this. Um, I think it's more just two-way communication and, and honesty and seeing, just testing things out to see what works. So I'll pass, pass the torch on to see if the other two have better answers. I remember correctly that you said I should go next, Maya. Uh, probably. I, I can't even remember myself now. That's fine. Let, let's um, go with that. <laughs> so um, I I would just say that if, if and this is one, one situation where I would say if the company allows, uh, there is the policy there, then... And if the people that you manage um, prefer one way or another, I don't think you as a manager 
choose how to bring the people in into the office. So let's say if the company says we are fully remote company or we are hybrid, then you as a manager, I don't think you have that much to to be like, no, you have to come to the office because, uh, sorry, it's my cat coughing. <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, yeah, so so this, uh, this is the one time that I think you have to put aside your personal preferences when there is like HR and pe- between arrangement between HR and the people. That's one thing. The second thing I would just say, uh, and that's adding to Kate's point of paying more attention to being more, including people, not and and also paying more attention how we communicate where we communicate in group meetings that are half high half online and half offline what's the room temperature how we make sure the introverts speak enough versus the extroverts and how we make sure those people who uh, usually are not like comfortable bringing asserting themselves are also heard so this is really we become also different type of facilitate a facilitator in this setup yes it's it's tough it's difficult but we we do live in in the world and that we live in so we have to make the most of it but also um this is one time that we have to be more open to what the people we manage want and prefer and how the company caters that versus if I prefer to have to spend face to face time with you or not. Yeah, I'll just expand on what uh, Kate and Christina mentioned. It's a tough challenge, definitely, everyone faces. But when it comes to the delegation part in a hybrid or online uh, environment, definitely it, it starts with the mindset of the leader. The mindset needs to let go a few things. If that manager is used to actually stepping in in every way along the way or basically checking in every hour or every day, that is not going to help, even in physical, how, let alone online. So the mindset needs to change. The mindset needs to change. Okay, I need to give more trust to the team members. Now it's I don't see them in front of me. So they need to believe in them. Okay, they do have what it takes. And just set the expectations there. Just like help them set the expectations. This is all the new norms. This is how we're going to communicate back also to what uh, Christina and Kate mentioned. This is the way of communication. And when it comes to delegation and hybrid, is the online presence is very important as well, especially if you're fully just remote. So they need to know when you're online, how you're online, how they know to approach you, when to approach you as well. So tailor this, start from your mindset, create a little bit of different culture to transforming, a little bit more trust there, and just go from there. And uh, definitely uh, have the check-in planned and exactly what is expected to check in for the delegated tasks and explain why you're delegating. It's important as well. If you're delegating just to have, because I have too much on my shoulder, okay, say it. Or are you delegated to help them improve? Or are you delegating to because you don't know how to do it or actually you want them to do it better? So it just comes communication expectations and basically just change your mindset as a leader will help a lot. Uh, excellent. Uh, thank you for sharing that. You already in the in what you said touched upon the feedback and importance of it. Uh, actually, maybe what what I would just like to add is that definitely trust is something that is absolutely necessary that has to work in the team and between manager and their team members. Uh, but as you mentioned as well, communication and sharing the feedback and being able to say like, you know what, I feel like this is too much. So let's talk a little bit about feedback and the feedback culture in the team. Um, how do you help mentees who actually want to improve the feedback culture in the team? What would be your advice or maybe some tricks or tips that you know that are working well? And let's start this time with Danielle, then I will ask Katerina and then Christina at the end. Excellent topic, especially in the culture and the feedback as well. Uh, when it comes to that, definitely we can advise the mentee to create, I know psychological safety is something important that needs to be there, but how they do it is they need to live by it, definitely. So they will need to ask for feedback more frequently from their team members as well. So every one-on-one, every team meeting they do. So they send out, let's say a survey. Okay, tell me how I've done. 
tell me what I can improve. So when they practice it themselves, they give that feeling to others. Okay, I am taking feedback and this is what I would like you to do as well. And I'm going to do for you. So again, setting expectations, creating this psychological safety and making sure when you set the expectations, it is safe to ask questions. It is safe to criticize, but offer solution. It is safe to actually offer some constructive feedback and praise at the same time, because the team is going to be watching you and is going to be following every step you do to test that theory. So you need to really lead by example over there on that part. Uh, another thing as well, you need to establish a channel of feedback. So what to use in the organization? Is it survey periodically every quarter? Is it just anonymous or it's not anonymous? It depends on the culture as well. The less anonymous, the better open culture. That is for sure on that part. But just uh, walk the talk, pass the test, because the team is going to put you on the test when it comes to creating that culture of feedback. Constantly ask for feedback and provide feedback. Balance between appraisal and constructive feedback. That's important as well. I couldn't agree more, really. Um, the only thing I would add is if you're starting with a team where this culture is not embedded or you have to go into a team where, you know, this it's, it's really not there, then I think it always starts with you, right? And so not only in terms of honesty, but saying, hey, I, I want you to give me feedback, whether openly, publicly, and I would almost encourage that. And so when you do get it, you need to accept it. Um, really kind of grab grab it and let people know that this is this is okay. I'm I'm okay to to get this feedback and actually I'm thanking you for it. Um and it really has this snowball effect because one person says it twice and then a second one will, and then you really start to harness and build this collective where they can actually do it with each other, which is ultimately what what you want, right? You don't want to be that middle person where one has a problem with the other and they go through you. You want them to be able to communicate. So that's one point. The second point that I've always emphasized with, I think, all of my teams, mentees and everything, to me, there's a huge difference between criticizing and complaining. I have no problem with criticism. You tell me what's wrong, but you tell me how to do it better, how to fix it. You give me suggestions for improvements, and I will take that. That's a conversation we can have. If you complain and you just say, this is terrible, this is bad, this is awful, and you would put a period at the end of it, I don't want that. Keep that to yourself because that's not, there's no way to go from that conversation. Um, and so encouraging this to say you are allowed to be negative and you are allowed to critique something, but critique it and tell me how we can make it better. Um, that's usually what takes some time, but starts becoming a little bit more of a positive culture is even out of a negative thing, something beautiful can, can grow. I think if it's voiced the, the right way. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, two very practical points just to add um, on what Kate said is um, and on, onto the topic of complaining and um, criticizing, but also when you, uh, focus on behaviors and focus on not the personalities uh, that actually also changes the narrative somehow but um, be besides that yeah when when giving any kind of feedback negative feedback is always not it's, it's not a very comfortable thing uh, either giving or receiving but um, I think when you make it more constructive and make it outcome driven and, and change the narrative of what needs to be changed what what can be changed what should be changed I think that makes it a little bit more easier also uh what helps me or help me as a manager i i don't wait until something has happened and then feedback becomes a thing you just have to have a specific one-to-one -one and you have to address what what was wrong um i i usually keep the feedback both ways um during our one-to-ones and in a conversation and it's not a something that i give the people i manage it's something that we talk we discuss and uh it's a two-way communication and it usually helps when um you whatever comes up within that given time period whether it's a one-to-one -one weekly or bi-weekly uh you address all of it within that given timeline and it doesn't become a bigger thing um 
And also it helps when there is an issue and then you address it on a timely manner. That also doesn't become a much bigger issue later on. But as a, as a one common uh, point that I would mention is that creating a safe environment, not only for you to just be able to give the feedback um, and and constructive feedback and and get like a positive outcome from it, but also for them to be able to to really like address whatever is bo bothering them as well. Wonderful. Uh, I think it's important to actually maybe say as well because many, not just first time managers, but many leaders sometimes feel like saying or getting negative feedback is something bad I've been seeing this quite a lot and it's also important uh, if your mentee is struggling with this kind of uh, this kind of thing is just point out like you know you are not most often not receiving negative feedback because the people who are giving you that are mean or they are trying to be just horrible to you but it is something that you can take and work with and then show that uh, that you are really trying to do better and so on. So it's not just to discourage you from what you are doing, but actually you can really learn from it. So even if it's tough, just don't feel like you failed and people are trying to make you fail, but really just focus on what you can take from it and what you can get better at. If I may add one one last thing, because I think it's uh, also important when you give feedback and somebody takes that feedback and 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 actually makes something positive of of it or follows that feedback, then it is very very important to ac acknowledge that in your next meeting with the same person or in a group setup, it's really important to actually like show that you see that they took the step and it, it is um in my in my experience it, it really is a very very positive it creates a positive environment that's excellent point and let's talk a bit now about the uh, growth of the team in terms of developing people because that is something that the team just needs to really get better and so i'm just wondering what activities do you do to develop your team and what would be your advice uh, for mentees who want to focus on team development? And let's start at this time with Christina, then Daniel, and then Kate. Oh. Um, I think we touched upon this topic a little bit in the beginning and throughout. Throughout um, Developing, again, de depends in what kind of situation you are as a manager uh, and what you, what the goal for the team is. Um, you start from understanding the team, uh, understanding the team dynamics, but uh, as well as a manager trying to facilitate uh, collaboration, trying to facilitate healthy team dynamics. And, um, and it doesn't necessarily mean going out every week or having drinks and dinners uh, because a lot of people are introverts and they don't necessarily want to do that. So it just means in the work environment, show that um, encourage somehow for, for the team to work together, to collaborate together and, and really care for each other's success and, and uh, eliminate any kind of toxicity that could be uh, between different team members. So I don't know what else we can say that we haven't said and it's not a repetition. So guys, go ahead if you have anything else to say. Thank you, Christina. Definitely we touched on that along the way. Uh, I guess some of the activities we could uh, ask the mentees to uh, apply with their team is, first that we mentioned delegation. Delegation teaches people a lot, definitely. So delegate tasks, projects, and new assignments mention why you're delegating and make it purposely okay i'm delegating this task for you to get better at communication or better at presenting or better at putting a case together or better at building a business case so delegate and have tasks and check on the progress check in not check out there's diff two big difference so you're checking in to see the progress and helping them not check up just to breathe over their neck that's different there's another thing which is very useful as well we uh, we recommend to the mentees to do is 
each individual or everyone, not everyone is interested in development. There are some people who are just superstars. They're comfortable where they are. They don't want to improve, which is fine. But also that comes down to knowing each member and what they want to do personally and professionally. Something called Individual Development Plan or IDP. And there's a lot of uh, templates on the internet. It's, in, it's good to have it for each member because it's going to outline the strength, the weaknesses, the resources needed from the manager, and the timeline and the tasks needed to get there. And there's going to be check-in. So this is going to be Individual Development Plan and it, it has to be made clear that it's their responsibility. You are just there to help them along the way. They need to own it. The leader cannot own everyone's growth plan, but they're there to navigate and help along the way. So delegation, individual development plans, engage in new activities, and just this the golden triangle, which is performance, image, and exposure. Performance needs to be always on track. Image, it's their responsibility. They have to be professional all the time. Exposure, it's the leader responsibility to give them exposure to different opportunities, different leaders, different organizations and departments. And by this, we can help them just develop their team members. The, I think thing I will add here is for me, it's always important to try and build an environment where you fail successfully. And what I mean by that is I think mistakes and things you do, they're, they're inevitable. No one has had ever a course in their life where they did everything perfectly. And so it's, it's expected. But the fail successfully to me is if you're going to mess something up, then I want you to be able to learn from it so that we don't continue making that same mistake again. Um, and the most beautiful thing happens if you can prevent others from making the same mistake that, that, that you did. And so we have um, a couple of team activities that, that we do. Um, they're nothing as professionally called as, as Daniel had, uh, pardon my French, but we have humble brags and fuck ups. It's literally what we call them. Um, and the team goes through and we talk about something that you're extremely proud of that, that you did, which actually ends up being the harder part because a lot of us, I think, can go back and realize the mistakes that we made and what those were. Um, and it's harder to actually sit there and say, what did I actually do? Well, what is it that I'm, that I'm proud of? And so this activity at the beginning is quite hard, but eventually they get into the rhythm of it and they can very humbly brag about something. So that's, that's one in terms of motivation and developing them. But the fail part is always beautiful to me because you get a chance to kind of get it off your shoulders and say, I did this and it was just terrible. And in that moment, right, this is how I was feeling. And it was just awful and the rest of the team goes it doesn't sound that bad like it's it's okay and you realize you live past it and they can actually learn and ask ask questions um so that's one activity that we do and it's incredible to see when you realize that one you're not the only one that messes up and it's okay and you can learn on or you can move on um so yeah i think that's that's one team activity that we do that i find very beneficial Excellent. Um, so I think the last question is ahead of us. Uh, maybe before we proceed to it, I would just like to say that right after that question, we will do Q and A's. We'll have a few minutes to do that. So if you have any question, uh, feel free to drop it in chat or get ready to ask uh, when we are done with my last question. And that last question would be focused on tips and resources. So. Um, I would like to ask our speakers to share what tips and resources they share with the mentees to help them become a better leader. And let's now start now with Kate, then Christina, and then Daniel at the end. Sounds good. Um, tips, I think I have one. We talked about a little bit with the remote working and stuff. One tip that I have is if you have people who are working remotely, um, when you don't need anything, where you're not checking in on a project or something like that, um, start a conversation. It works miracles because I think a lot of us, when we're not face-to-face, -face, we forget those little interactions that we have in the elevator, at reception, in the kitchen, whatever. And when you go remote, you don't, you stop having those. And so just occasionally checking in, hey, how's your day going? Did you watch the game last night? Whatever it is. And it's interesting because people go, do you, do you need something? And you go, no, no, I just I just want to check in on you. And they go, oh, thank you. I, like, I appreciate that. 
And then it reduces a little bit of this anxiety from the other side that whenever you see me pop up on Teams or Slack or whatever you use for communication, that immediately you think I, I need something from you. Um, that sometimes I just want to talk. And I, I think that's something very small that is, as a leader, as a manager, you can you can do. So that's one. And two, Daniel already mentioned it, um, but I stand by them. Personality tests, there's a bunch of free resources online, things that you can do, things that you can use. And every new team member that I have, I they 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 get voluntold um, to take the personality test. Um, but the ones that we do, it tells you kind of what your blind spots are and your communication styles. And then we have this cheat sheet where you have to add in your own kind of sentence. And so in this whole team that we have, there's three bullet points that you create yourself to say, hey, if you're scheduling a meeting with me or if you're talking to me, these are maybe things that I really prefer and things I don't. So for me, I'm somebody who needs small talk. So can we like, Alec, give me two minutes. I need it. Versus, hey, if you're coming to me with a decision or something, I need you to give it to me beforehand. And these little things, I think, really help. So one tool I would say is just use the personality test, but don't just take it once and leave it. Have it integrated into the team. Uh, yeah, and I would like to add also a little bit. We talked about this, um, totally agreeing with, with Kate, um, but we talked about micromanagement. Really, it's, it's difficult not to follow this instinct of checking in, making sure it's done, it's done the way you want it to be done or you imagine it to be done as a manager. Um, just take time to really get rid of this kind of um, um, behavior, let's say, and build trust, build an open relationship by open communication, regular feedback, and trying to understand that you are there to enable their success. They, it's not like a relationship when, when they always do some things for you uh, or for your manager because you didn't do it, but it's really that you are there to enable enable their success to actually achieve the goals that the company has given to you. So um, yeah, I guess everything else what Kate said, I I totally agree. Give give space for failures. It's not. Uh, I always say we're not brain surgeons. It happens, and make make sure that whatever you say, actually, they believe you said it because you act the same way you you speak. You don't say one thing and then your actions show completely different different personality of yours. So, yeah, just remember you work with people, and uh, management is nothing else than just being a normal human being. Be kind, don't micromanage, don't be a, a horrible person. Listen, pay attention to what they might or might not be going through because you'd be surprised how many people are going through how much stuff right now. So really keep that in mind. And unless you are a brain surgeon and they're, from their actions, somebody's life is in the line, then really it's it's work. <laughs> and it's it's difficult to admit but it is no matter how important we think our jobs are it's it's work unless we're saving lives and in that case that's different so apart from that that's it just be kind be nice that's all yeah um, i agree with everything also mentioned by christina and kate and when it comes to resources i'm a bookworm so reading is my guilty pleasure over there so i just uh, offer in terms of uh, some uh, books for the first time managers and that helped me personally and hopefully it's going to help people uh, i'm i'm very bad with the authors so uh, excuse me there but there's a book called five stars this is on communication it's brilliant very short and sweet uh, emotion intelligence book also very effective in terms of eq uh, leaders eat last that's also a good book and also touches a millennial as well and how to manage that in the workforce and it is surrounded by idiots and don't let the title fool you, but it's a good book about different categories and personalities. It doesn't say what it is there. Uh, the five dysfunctions of a team. It's also a story about five personalities and how to, how, how to deal with each of them. So that's also a, a, a good book on that part. And yeah, it is called uh, as well, the coaching habit. So all these books are really 
a uh, good one. And Kate, the culture map, that's a brilliant book as well, definitely. So it explains. Thank you for that. So yeah, just when it comes to resources, books and TED Talks. TED Talks and about leadership. TED Talks is also a very good platform to uh, get more knowledge and also ideas around leadership if you want and anything in life. Excellent. Thank you for all the tips. Um, so that was my last question. Uh, it's already uh, half past six, but I hope you don't mind if we just stretch it by a few minutes to give uh, people opportunity to ask if they have any kind of uh, questions because there was a lot of insights and a lot of information to share. So now I would like to uh, go to Q and A's and just let people ask and I can already uh, see uh, that there is a question from Matteo in the chat and he's asking, do you have any personality tests you can suggest that you've seen working? So anyone who wants to answer that, feel free to do so. Uh, Mateo, I definitely do. Uh, rather than spitballing it here, um, I promise to send it to Maya. She can send it with the rest of them. But there's a, some wonderful free resources. There's also a couple of paid ones. There's some incredible companies in Prague that, that do this. They will send you a personality test with a full kind of like discovery kit of everything. So depending on if you have an actual budget within your team to be able to invest in this, it's wonderful. And we've done quite a few of them. And there's also some free ones that I'll send you that I've used in the past um, and that have been awesome. So rather than just naming them here right now, I'll, I'll send them through. One that comes to my mind off the top of my head, but we can actually maybe connect also later, is Insights, uh, Insights Finder, Insights Developer. So Insights Discovery, sorry, uh, that I've done a couple of times with different sizes of um, groups and it works really, really nicely. So I'll, I'll put it in the chat. I know a couple of them as well, so we can share it with Maya later on, definitely. So there's something called 16 personalities. It's free and also as well, you can go with it. And uh, I guess the hexago as well, one is also a, a powerful one. So we can share it afterwards with Maya and she can share with us. Definitely. Um, excellent. Any other questions that we might have uh, from our audience? Okay, so I have one. <laughs> Can I go ahead? Yeah, go on, definitely. <laughs> okay, so well, this one is, is for example, for you, Daniel, that you know, you know, I really like um, yeah, your work. So you mentioned, and, and Kate as well, you mentioned personality tests, and we are all mentioned personality tests, and, and I wanted to go one step, um, one step further. So as you know, I, I, I do what it is, uh, psychometric tests, and uh, these are used to select for recruitment to select um, candidates. And uh, are you using it in some way also, for example, to evaluate um, when you are going to promote a leader? Or, or yeah. So is there is there a way in which you are implementing? Are you are also using this type of test, or, or or you go mainly only for this personality test? And thank you. Thank you, Carol. Uh, good to see you again as well. Hopefully you're doing well. And uh, when it comes to the personal test, we don't use it in our organization or personally for the hiring. So mainly about just bringing self-awareness for that person, whether a coachee or whether a mentee as well, just to get to know themselves better, to know what exactly we work on moving forward and see what are the blind spots and also work on the strength and building up on it. So purely just more self-awareness on that part. Completely echoing uh, Danielle, we've, not that I know of, used personality tests to assess or to put somebody in a certain position. Um, I've definitely used them in my team to try and gauge where some of the blind spots or weaknesses might be um, and help with that person to say, you know, if you're trying to step up into maybe a greater leadership role or whatnot, um, are these things that are going to hinder you? Could they slow you down? And how can we kind of work on these? Excellent. Do we have any other questions? I'm just going to quickly check. Um, 
Yeah, we've got one more question from Matteo about soft skills. Are there any core ones you look into for leaders that you think are fundamental? Can touch on it a little bit. Oh, please go, Kate. Uh, no, no, no. You, I think you were first. Yeah, definitely. Uh, soft skills. I mean, uh, now showing empathy is a really important stuff. Uh, definitely there in our time, especially when we, we're dealing with uh, millennials and Gen Z. I'm a millennial myself, so I mean, so in terms of basically how to really go about this communication, how to show empathy there uh, and understand, but also listening skills is also very important. Uh, their people skills. This is something underrated nowadays, especially COVID just came and just just wipe that out as well with the less communication. So it's just really the empathy part, really important. Uh, the communication, how you communicate clearly, how you deliver this feedback and how you actually build on what you say. And uh, in terms of uh, understanding personalities and tailor your approach to each individual, this is very important. And those are the things that really uh, matter when it comes to a leadership position. Definitely agree with that. I think the ones that I would add to it is for me, humbleness. I think if people are humble, um, then it's a lot easier to, to not only work with them, but to kind of push them, push them forward. Um, honesty. I think if people are honest with the things that they know are doing well and things that they're not, then it, again, it's, I think it's a lot easier to even help move them forward because if they're honest with themselves and they can be honest with you and stuff like that. So those are two. Um, and then the last one that is always, I think the, the cherry on top is I think in today's world where there's problems all around us, I think having a good sense of humor is important because um, sometimes you just need to be able to laugh at things and yourself and everything else and then just move on. So people who don't take themselves a little too seriously, um, I don't know if I call it fundamental, but I would, I, I'd say it's important at least for, for me. And I'll add a couple of more uh, adaptability, agility, because it's a it's a very fast pace changing environment. And if you as a manager are not able to really change and adapt fast to whatever is happening in the business, you're not going to be able to keep also your team up to date with all the changes. Um, integrity. We talked about integrity and being nice and empathetic and all of this, uh, obviously. And then the last one that, it, and it, this isn't not like one, two, three. It's not like a numeric. Uh, I don't, I don't add numeric values to this. It's just uh, that came to my mind. And then the last my, my, one I would uh, also not mention is conflict re resolution, being able to identify conflicts and, and resolve uh, without really being a, too much of a fight or being a pushover, being in the right place when it comes to resolving conflicts, not only for yourself, but for your team. So, that's it. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing these insights. And I think it's time to wrap it all up. Um, so I would like to thank you and big thank you to our speakers for kindly accepting our invitation for today's uh, panel and for sharing all these insight and excellent information and also thank you to all of you who joined us today uh, who listened and i really hope that maybe you're going to have opportunity soon to implement some of these things that you learned uh, today and i'm really hoping to see you uh, sometime again on one of our other events so thank you have a wonderful rest of the day or evening and hopefully see you again <laughs>